Yo, welcome back everybody. Today we have gameplay from Kael'thas of all heroes that highlights the importance of this meta of identifying what tribes are in, what are go-to key compositions, and what are the pivot lines to beat them. Because quite frankly, this game was predictable from as early as turn four. You know what the high roll lines are? You know what beats those? You know what are other achievable lines? It's like playing rock, paper, scissors and seeing that paper's banned. Hmm, I wonder what people are going to play and what do you need to do to beat that? All right, enjoy. don't matter <laughs> all right all right all right lose or tie two combats is actually kind of hard we're strong snicker snack is reasonable seven murlocs or demons for cookbook at least is reasonable because you can play murlocs to scale murlocs so you don't just hemorrhage getting to cookbook and we do have tempo Beast, Demon, Murloc, Naga, Pirate. So it's not a tempo lobby either. Like, we don't have to deal with the mid-game mech boards. This one's probably going to a stolen gold board. So, like, Cookbook doesn't fix our problem most of the time. That doesn't mean we shouldn't take it. Like, we're naturally buying a Murloc and a Demon already here. Buy 9 for passive scaling versus buy 7 for Cookbook. Snickersnack, we can do... It is a Murloc lobby and we could just concede the rounds and just get snickersnack online stolen gold board yeah it's a beast lobby stolen gold wins the majority of times here now we don't have the option of stolen gold we just know where the game's going snickersnack murloc versus cookbook this is kind of a no-brainer but you know. Honestly, if we're going to hemorrhage the two rounds. Just do it this way. Play in the Murlocs. Not even going to play them. Just going to take my L. It's not like we really get stronger by playing it. So what have we got quest wise? Ghastly Mask, Red Hand, Anima Bribe, Friends, Victim, Spectre, Friends, Alter Ego. So no stolen gold. Cool. It's a lot of greed. Nice. We do like a little bit of greed. We gonna lose this round? Three on three, Brucon. Yeah. And if we're not, then I would like to just save health. Whoops. <laughs> Shit. I forgot it's Kael'thas. Kael'thas plays. The number of times I've played Kael'thas since they've redesigned him, not high. Instead of taking the one attack, we should have taken the the two two here permanently. Think you might be too strong? Yeah, if we lose, we don't lose, we don't lose. That's fine. Like, I don't really need Snickersnack online this turn. We don't have any battle cries. So, like, we're going to lose at some point. We don't exactly need to activate it as quick as humanly possible. Yo, Lenny, take care. Redeemed the damn pet. Pet the damn person. Good night. It's 2 a.m. Sag, dude. It's almost the weekend. That part, happy. Now I think we're going to lose the round. <laughs> well, our whole board's poisoned. Soon. Instatoxman. We'll take it. Extra little bonus pet. 
I work the weekend. Damn. Closer, one day closer to the next day off. Could take a jug. It's a lot of tempo for next turn. We'll have Snicker Snack online. You can get a 12 12 out of it. Damn. Did you just triple into a 4 2? Oh, he actually just leveled and hero powered into the tempo 4. We know we're weak, but I, that's real weak. Crazy. That's like nasty strength. It's not really us being like, we are weak. Don't get me wrong. But like, that doesn't affect how strong you are on turn six. Woo, quest. The problem is beasts are in. We're going to need stats and poison. Mechs are the biggest problem for Murlocs, but... I'm very tempted to take this. Take you first. Can take gold. Leave the two battle cries on the board. I did it right this time, guys. Aren't you proud of me? Woohoo. Basic shit. He did basic shit right. I know, buddy. All right, so we got the poison on the toxin. That's pretty cool. Eh? Get this one. It's right here. Nah. That wasn't it. A little late now. Both poisons gone too. Just Sag. Just Sag, bro. Guess it's whatever. Oh, leapers. Doesn't have to be stolen gold sometimes. You can just get into it. Roper. I see. Pass. Pass. Self is going to be pretty tough to play in this game. Second Toxfin and health. Health is pretty damn good. Um, yeah, it's enough Toxfin. This is fine. But gurgle. I see. Two out of three to get the remaining poison or another poison on the board. Don't think we care about cycling through here. Unless we think we really need to play for like fourth here. We got some nice stuff. We have a lot of poison on the board. We have a decent amount of stats. We can't really play toward utility yet. I think we just leave it like this for the turn. Your dogs are ultra chill for some reason. Most indoor dogs I know are perma hyper. They're not only indoor dogs though. They're just indoor dogs right now. Indoor during stream. Right, we got the poison. We also got a two health buff to the board, which is nice. But yeah, they, I mean, they are indoor dogs. To be fair, but they're not, not indoor 100% of the time. They're just used to it. They old. Meh. It's the only thing we can buy this turn. All right, that's, that's pretty cute. So I can play Begurgle. I could play nothing. I could play Primal Fin. 
getting golden burger rolls pretty nice. Now we just need Murkai. Easy. This game's actually so much easier when you just hit what you're looking for. Honestly, it isn't that hard. Have you tried just hitting? So we could do one of two things. We can sell the war leader to play for additional triples, and then we use Murkai to continuously put the poison back on the board. Or we can play without a primal fin, and in the process, use Murkai to potentially trigger Begurgle more times to get more stats on the board. Given two beast boards, that could be better. Like, Ghoul Baron is our play. We need Ghoul and we need Baron more than anything. And we need health to survive till that point. Because that's what wins is five Murlocs, Ghoul Baron. And we can use that to, uh, to deal with Elite Frogger comps. Because we have two of them already forming. So we have like multiple people we need stats against. Like this guy, like this guy. Those are both Leapfrogger boards. This guy we need nothing against. This is like Murlocs. We're just going to play each other and, and do like three damage to each other. Don't know what this board is. We also need a cycle spot. So like putting another poison on the board here. Kind of sus. On the other hand, we might just end up hard rolling if we don't find enough stuff. Because it is just Baron and, and Ghoul that make the biggest difference at the end here. Okay. That's fine. I don't want him anyway. Like, it's either 26 attack or poisonous. So that, that way you can word it. Like, if you fail on this, then that means this triggered, so it's always 26 attack. Which is fine. Isn't printing gold kind of good? No. Not really. Just creates a triple. And on top of that, you don't have a cycle spot. So like, do I think one gold is better than 24, 24 stats on the board? That's what the argument is. And no, I don't think one gold is better than 24, 24 stats on the board. Doesn't matter if you're hard rolling or not. The stats are still relevant. Do we need Baron stuff for the end of the game? Baron Ghoul? Yeah. But we're still on turn 10. So poison goes? No, nothing goes. Not yet. Beast board, but it's not the one we know is Leapfrogger. We think this guy is going to be our last opponent. We need Selfless Hero, but I don't think he is. Alright, well, there's your combo. Do we need to commit it against the Elise? Is there any reason not to commit it? Do you think that he's full Leapfroggers? I do not. This is a Leapfrogger board. Which we need Ghoul Baron for. This is a demon board, should be trivial. This is a, we don't really know. This is why we were debating whether we wanted to commit Baron Ghoul here to deal with Leapfrogger. But it's an anima bribe game. I imagine like bigger cleave is more likely. I'd prefer to have, you know, seven minions on the board that can get cleave as opposed to just, or five. Ooh, it is actually Leapfroggers. He's not quite Leapfroggers to be fair. And he's also immune to Ghoul Baron. He has big stats with anima bribe on his shit. Mm-hmm. There's only so many leaps here. Only so many times you can leap. Now, that being said, our hits kind of suck. Thank you. Thank you for killing the Baron. All right, we got him anyway. Isn't it better to ditch the Primal Fin and not accidentally triple? Why would we be upset about accidentally tripling? We have to sell one Murloc this turn. Wouldn't tripling be good? 
Wouldn't that be what we want? We gotta sell two, actually, because we're fighting this guy. If anything, the triple is the thing we want. Nope. 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 Okay. So I'm gonna get out Toxpin just to guarantee the procs on, like, good things. We can play this through. We can play this through. We can take a couple rolls. I'd like this thing to get buffed. Got second ghoul. We can buy that. This is gonna be off the board the vast majority of the time. But if there's ever a time we're gonna keep it, it's right now. If we got that triple. So which one doesn't make the cut now? I don't care about con consolidating stats anymore. So it's you because of the triple threat. Now the triple threat's a problem. All right. And now we have Ghoul Baron against the Leapfrogger board. If he hasn't protected himself, then board go boom. Yeah, look, it's Golden Baron. Board go boom. Actually, it was really good hit for him. He got, like, the perfect hit. <laughs> Unfortunately, he hit here. Still, he's probably going to get us. Because this thing with Golden Baron is enough. Ew. Fucking leapers, man. Like, we, had, we could hit left on the opening hit, and he insta-dies. And then he had to hit the extra stats from the bird to keep his board alive for the ghoul not dying on the next hit. Unfortunate. But we're built to beat that. We just got a little bit scammed. It's at least like a 70% to win. Like it's just auto win if we hit the 50-50 at the beginning. Not sure if this is the actual number. We know that there are issues with Leapfrogger, but it's very high for us to win. So Golden Baron is by far the best hit. Golden Ghoul is a little bit tougher to justify or double Ghoul or whatever because they don't go off at the same time or they're delayed and if he gets enough leaps or plays a Goldrin or whatever, he fixes his comp. I don't think we do anything really against this guy. Could play without the Ghoul. Could play Leroy. Just view it as we're playing for one round. Just kill him and we probably can't scam the Leapfrogger four times. Would Bird do it? It coin flips. Bird coin flips for you. Not to mention you'd have to drop a Murloc to do it. So like... We have better than a coin flip right now. I don't really want to commit for a coin flip for later. I didn't expect him to be this strong, to be fair. He's pretty strong. We are playing two tech cards on the board instead of real minions. But it's the only way we get by the last guy, so... I see. I see. Wasn't even close. Not even close. Baron's got this shit. No, no, no. It's fine. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Even though he didn't get stolen gold, these games are so predictable. When you take away all the things that counter beast, like if you're stolen gold, you just auto win this lobby. Nobody was given stolen gold, but he still got to golden leapfroggers. Hero power savior. Yeah, for real. I will try it. 
It needs to die, remember? We could also play bird now. Like, if we can get this to go off, the 50-50 may be the best we get. It's a shot at bird. The gurgle dies now, I'm aware. But we have health. Leroy to try to trigger something first. Awkward. We have the gold to buy it. We've got to sell something. Just sell something, bro. Sell the cards you don't want. Manted's not really doable. Just triple Baron. Yeah, just triple Baron, bro. If you triple Baron, do you beat him? It just depends how he pivots. Like, he just needs to protect from his minions dying to ghoul. If he gets Uthers and shit, he wins. And there goes the board. Leapfroggers is way worse when there's no leapfrogging. Crazy how that works. <laughs> Why, why is this so much worse now? Ugh. Another ghoul. Do it again. Baron. Can they position Frogger later? They still lose all of their shit first. So like, yeah, you can get the Frogger to go later. That way it'll leap on the taunts, but you only get two leaps or three leaps from the first one. And it goes on like a couple of things and there are no death rattles left. So you just kind of go and die. He kind of needs Zap or Uther to save himself here. No. So if we think that the alt is Zap or Uther... We can just play Uther on our own Baron. Then play down a minion. What happened? We ghouled his board. We gooed him. Could play uh, Begurgle for stats. We also could play Makah at this point. Like, this is where we're talking about, like, Makah is potentially a pivot. Position? No, I don't want it. No, no, no. I don't want this. Mm-mm. That's not important here. What's important is ordering so that this thing can value trade before it would die to the taunt so we can one-shot him. If we put it later, it's going to die to a bigger minion. Don't throw because you want gold for a non-existent round. Stop it, chat. Stop throwing. Gross. We still lost. Why are we getting scammed? Why does this keep happening? All right, at least we got the tie. Like, we are way more likely to kill him by playing this thing second than playing it any later. Well, he got a divine shield for his macaw, which helped a lot. The extra minion on the board is fairly irrelevant. Shielding Baron is obviously good. We really, really just want a Baron. We win if we get Baron. Makah is a good tech piece. Game. Now it is like asking for Baron is ridiculously bad. A ridiculously low likelihood. Because there are five of them out of the pool. Whatever. We'll play it. If it's the last gold we have. Live, you little shits. Live! Alright, well at least you get to live. 
Keck W. All right, we got him. Five plus six plus four plus one plus two. What's that number? It's a dead frog. Why are there no leapers on the round? Because the order in which things are dying is triggering the death rattles to the board after the minions on the board after the leapfrogger. So if you look at what his order is on his board, the leapfrogger triggers while there's no minions because it goes left to right. Like, I wish I could cursor over his board. He basically has leapfrogger triggering before the minions on the board respawn. So if he knows Ghoul's going to go off, he can put leaper in the far right side. All the minions spawn, then the leapfrogger would trigger at the end. Like, if he knows that's going to be the case. Now, that being said, that doesn't save him. So... So that really doesn't do anything if he just immediately attacks into this with a 15 attack macaw. That's cute. Cute nonetheless. But yeah, it's just the order of death rattles. Think of it like uh, Exodia Mex. If you play Exodia Mex before, with uh, having the Kangors in front of the the Omega Busters, so that the Kangors spawn first and refill the board, then the Omega Buster pops at the end and buffs all the Omega Busters that are already been respawned. Same thing's happening with Leapfrogger. Since his Leapfrogger's earlier, it triggers first, has no eligible minions on the board to jump to, then all the rats are spawning afterwards and filling the board.